Hey, what's up everybody? So, I forgot to make the introduction to this video, so it's right now. I want to say welcome all you new subscribers. Uh, I really appreciate you guys subscribing. This video is going to be a little different, so uh, just bear with me. I don't normally post stuff like this all the time. So, thank you guys for subscribing. I wanted to say hi. And this will be a little background for you. It'll be kind of nice. Also, Happy Easter! That's right, Easter 2016. So let's jump on into the video. Thumbs up. See ya. Hey, what's up everybody? So, today's going to be a little bit different. I'm sitting here in my shed talking about something. And honestly, this is probably going to be one of the most important videos I've ever made. Some of you are not going to get very far into this video and want to quit watching this. But I challenge you. I challenge you to watch this whole video. And I challenge you to think about it. Because I think it will honestly change some of your perspectives. So I really would appreciate it if you guys would actually watch this video. And what this video is about is basically my testimony about my faith belief and my faith journey. Where I'm at now and how I got here. So like I said, some of you are not going to make it. Uh, you're not going to want to watch this video. You're going to want to quit right now. I, I challenge you to watch this video. I'll try to keep it short, but I have to run through the whole story so you guys know where I'm at. Some of you are going to love this video and you're going to be thankful for watching it. And some of you are going to be learning something new and some of you are really not going to want to watch it. I challenge you to watch it, okay? So let's start from the beginning. This is my walk through my faith belief. Now, I'm not going to try to get too spiritual with you. I'm not going to be preaching from the Bible. I'm just going to tell you my story, okay? This is my story on my faith journey. It's been like a 15 year long journey and I'm going to run through it with you because I think it's very important. Okay, I think it's important for you guys to see where I come from, what I think, why I think that. Um, I talked about my childhood in an old video. I'll link that in the description. This is about my faith belief and my faith journey and my spiritual journey. Alright, so let's get started right now. So, I got my notes here because I got a lot of things I want to hit. Um, first of all, I do not want any comments with a pat on the back or good job Russ I, I, I just want to tell my story um, you know sometimes I post videos about really awesome things I'm doing and you guys you know are trying to give high fives and th like I, I don't want that I want to just give you guys my testimony um, I really don't want all the pat on the back and stuff leave your testimony in the comments if you want and be encouraging that way but this video is not about getting a pat on the back okay so let's start from the beginning. I was I was raised Catholic. Um, my dad and mom went to a church really close uh, to my dad's house, and basically, um, I just didn't get it. That was it. I went. I was dragged. I hated it. I didn't understand it. I was too young. Sit, stand, kneel, sing the homilies. I I I just I didn't get it, and that's no one's fault but I didn't get it okay so for the longest time when I got old enough to not be able to go I just I, I ended up just stopped going I didn't understand it um, and then so I was sort of on my own doing my own free thing for a while um, that was probably when I was I don't know 15 16 I think is whenever I had my own ability to not go and do what I wanted to and all the way up until probably 21 22 years old um, my sister my sister finally stopped going to a Catholic church and started going to a different type of church and it was really interesting but I still didn't like it. I didn't like the whole thing. I don't know why. I just stayed away from it and it was just, you know, my sister would listen to, to worship music on the radio and stuff and I, I just didn't like it. I, I don't know what the reason was. Um, eventually I met my wife. My wife was very religious and really into um she's you know, christian is my background by the way so my sister started going to christian churches and it was a different feeling and they raised their hands and they praised and worship and it just freaked me out i didn't like the stuff so my wife when i met my wife um there's a giant mosquito in here anyway when i met my wife she was very very spiritual and very heavy in the spiritual stuff and i was okay with that but it was something that i had to learn along the way so, through my wife, through experiences and all sorts of stuff, and, you know, if I wanted to marry my wife, I had to become, you know, 
I didn't have to become, but my wife wanted to marry somebody that was very religious or at least something similar and had a good spiritual background, and I really didn't. So for about four years while I, when my wife and I dated, we went through this whole thing. Um, we talked about it, we discussed it, and finally I was more open to it. And it took me, it took me a long time. Uh, even when we got married, I really wasn't deep into the spiritual stuff, and I wasn't really a believer to the full potential, even at that point. But I was, I was growing, I was learning. Um, so through all that, I want to get to the main story that basically brings us to the point where I really got into it. So I went to, my sister brought me to this church, and we didn't go there very often. Eventually, my wife and I bought a house, we got married, we lived in Evansville, Indiana, and we went to this church. Um, I think it was called Bethel Temple, and they had this one service. Uh, it was like a very mm, Catholic-feeling, normal-style church, but then they had this one service called The Edge, and The Edge was totally new edge. It was crazy. They sung really, you know, loud songs and musics. Uh, it, it was like, it was incredibly different. I kind of liked it. It was all right, so me and my wife started going there, and we ended up going there all the time, and then eventually the church broke away, um, I think the pastor had some issues, whatever. So the pastor actually was called to build his own church. So he went down to Louisville or to uh, uh, Kentucky, which is just across the river, like 30 minute drive. Built his own church down there, um, based on this new new type of service. So it was like pretty incredible. Um, so about a year later, they wanted to build another church back in Evansville on the side. Well, I in an old brewery of all places, believe it or not. So I drove past this place to my work. I worked third shifts at the time. I drove about a half an hour or longer to work. And on my way back, I drove, I drove past this place. And I just, I decided to, to test stuff. So the, I have a hard time with belief, my belief system, because I can't touch it or test it. You know, they, they, they tell you that, you know, um, there's a there's a god and you know it, it's you it's like you have to just imagine that there's a person here well um i had a hard time doing that i need to test i need to feel it i need to touch it i need to sense it i needed to test it so the what i did is is learned my faith journey is really important on testing everything so i decided i was going to help build this church Okay, I was going to go to work at 11 o'clock at night, 11, 11.30, whatever time it was. I was going to get off work at 7, 7.30, whatever time it was. I was going to drive straight to the church because on my way home, it was me and the guy that was in charge of building the place. We were the only two people there most of the time during the day. So he was there by himself, and I got to help him, which was nice. So for three months straight, my schedule was go to work at 11 o'clock at night, get off at 7, 7.30, drive to the church. I would work there until anywhere between 1 and 3 in the afternoon, sometimes even longer. It was incredibly long day. I'd drive home, say hi to the kids, go to bed, <laughs> try to go to bed. And I did that for three months straight, all right? And it's just something I wanted to do. I wanted to help build some amazing place like this that was really cool. Well, through that process, we the service we have, which I showed you guys a long time ago, I'll link that in the description, we have like some pretty cool worship, there's all sorts of lighting and really cool stuff, and they do all these things one by one each each Sunday, they have the service, they have a whole different setup and everything. Um, so basically, it, it was really cool because I got to, to get into that, and I got to actually see what it was like to be a part of the church, not just go to the church and have to believe something. So that period of my life, which was, I don't know, f five years ago or something like that now, uh, six years ago, five or six years ago, basically that part of my life, that testing, that was a big test for me, and it was, it turned out amazing. It was something I never thought I'd ever get to see. I got to see what was going on inside the church. I got to see where the money went that was brought in. I got to see all the behind the scenes things, and it really is amazing. Um... So that's sort of how I got really deep into my spiritual stuff. Now, that's that's an interesting story. Uh, there's a gentleman on YouTube that goes... Uh, the Okay, so the next important thing for me was, okay, tithing. Tithing, the Bible says give 10% of your income. Just give it away. Because God gives you the... In, you know, the Bible says that you're given the money 
And so you should give 10% back to do good things, to continue the good works. Um, that was a very hard thing. I, this is sort of in a mix of this story. I spent eight years really testing that one. It was, a, it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. Uh, and so there's a guy on YouTube, his name is uh, N-O Box 7, No Box 7. Um, I've been watching his videos for a long time, and he posted a video about tithing. And man, you should watch this video. It is the best video I've ever seen posted on YouTube about tithing from the people that I'm subscribed to. I will link that in the description. I so, so hope you go watch that video. He talks about how he's been tithing and how jobs kept getting better and how much more income he kept getting. And if you're responsible with a little, you'll be, you'll, you are trusted to be responsible with more. So that's the motto behind tithing. If, if you're responsible with a little you're given, you'll be responsible with more that you're given. And that just accelerates. It really does. If you can be trusted with little, you can be trusted with a lot more and you'll get that opportunity. That's the give freely, don't expect anything back, and see where it goes, see where life takes you. That's the adventure. You don't have to even be a religious person to believe in giving a certain amount of your money away because it's the right thing to do to people who need it, to homeless people, helping out. If you don't have money, you can help somebody. Like These are just principles that you learn, but something that you don't you know, have to be religious to even be a part of. But I guarantee you it will be a positive thing. So, tithing, all right? It took me... <laughs> like six or seven years before I turned on advertising on my YouTube. Most of you may not even like know this, but basically I turned on advertising on all my old videos because it was, okay, you can make money from YouTube. Yeah, let's make you money for YouTube. So what I did is I turned it on. The reason I turned it on is because I had to test something for myself. And what I what I tested was... I told myself, and I prayed about this, and I said, okay, if I turn on advertising and try to make money on YouTube, I'm going to give 30% of it back to the church or the community or to help people in need, whatever the case may be. I'm going to give 30% back. The other, uh, what is that, 70%, I'm going to pay for my van. I needed a van at the time. I, did, I didn't have enough room to fit all my family in my car. So that's what I did. The money I earn on YouTube, 30% of it goes back to people in need, and the other percentage goes to pay my bill for my van. And actually, I'm not making as much as I used to. It only brings like 200 to $300 per month. It's just enough to pay for the, the bill for the van. It's not as much as you'd think, but it's, it's fine. It's something. Plus, I can give 30% of that away. Sometimes I give more, but 30% is what I told myself. Okay, so those those are the two more important things that I had to learn, and tithing was the hardest. Okay, the other, the next hardest is just believing in the faith that you believe in, believing the things you can't see and touch. So testing is the way that I, I did this. So there are, there are, twenty, thirty, forty different scenarios I can give you. I'm just going to give you one scenario that just recently happened that really made me be strong in my belief system. Um, so the air conditioner just kicked in. I hope it's not too loud. So here we go. Um, there's one thing I always wanted. All right, I always wanted a milling machine. I always wanted a milling machine. So through my work, uh, they were going to get rid of the milling machine. They were going to just scrap it. I said, I'd buy it for scrap. They said, no, you can't just buy it for scrap. We have to offer it to everyone if you're going to buy it. So they offered it to everyone. And I ended up bidding like $800 or something like this. And I got that huge, giant milling machine. Uh, you guys saw that. If you're new subscribers to me, I'll, I'll link some of this stuff in the description. But this huge, giant milling machine. Well, I went to a, I got offered to go to about three or four conferences. I was not able to go to these conferences. Finally went to this conference, uh, the Global BEM conference, and this random guy, the guy I work for right now, random, never even have seen any of my videos, walks up to me, was introduced through one of my friends, walks up to me and he's like, I'd like to offer you a job to come out to California and work for me full time on this research stuff. What? You don't get that kind of opportunity as far as I'm concerned. Like, it just, it doesn't come, okay? And it's like, holy cow. So it's like, 
uh, okay. And then I spent a long time, me and my wife were talking about moving. We wanted to move up to where her parents were. I lived close to my parents in Evansville. I didn't want to move up there. And I'm like, let's try to move somewhere else like um, Colorado or something like this. It seemed like a good place to go. And while we were in Colorado during this conference, I was offered a position in California. And so, I don't know, three months went by or so, and finally we flew out there, we checked it out, it was amazing. And I thought, okay, let's take this opportunity. It, I thought to myself, I could go out there and it could be a complete fail, and I've got my whole family out there, and it could be a disaster. Or I could go out there and it could be amazing and successful, but if I don't go, I'll never know. So I went, and that's where I am right now. So I've got this tiny little space I call my shop, and I have no room to hardly move in here. And I, I had to give up a lot. One of the things I had to give up was that milling machine. I couldn't bring it with me. It's just too big. It weighs 5,000 pounds, 5,500 pounds. I just couldn't move it. Uh, more or less drag it all the way 2,000 miles to California. I could have, but I just, I sold it to my neighbor for like 200 bucks. Here's the thing. I spent three months, dedicated three months, making that thing work on 220. I used it once. And then I had to get rid of it. So I had to get rid of something I always wanted and finally have and only had for three months to do something better, which was move to California, do something I love, do something I want to do. So um, that's that's what I did. I got rid of the milling machine. It's it, it's it was it was a risk if you want to call it that. I had to you know it was a risk to come out here. So a side note. This is part of the story. This all happened within about three weeks. These few last things here I'm talking about. Well, not that. The milk was like two years ago. So I had my other car. Um, it was my grandpa's. The one I tried to fix with a sensor in it. It had all sorts of problems. So uh, in about a month, we well, actually in a couple of days, April, we had to renew the license plate. The car is falling apart. It's not worth anything. I, really, I tried to give it to somebody. They wouldn't pass smog because it had an issue. It was a big ordeal. I had to bring it back. I tried to fix it. It still had issues. So we were just to the point where it had to be going to the scrapyard. Some random guys drove through the neighborhood and randomly, I was down the street, randomly asked my wife that was outside if the car is for sale. Completely out of the blue. They drive down the street and they, they found me because my wife told them and I was like, yeah, I was like, it's for sale. Um, you know, how much you want, you know, tell me how much you're going to buy it for, blah, blah, blah. And I, I said something like 800 bucks. It's just stupid. I don't even know why I said that. And they just laughed and they're like, no, 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 no. And the guy was telling me, you know, he really needs a car and this and that. I said, well, how about like 200 bucks or 300 bucks? Like, how about that? He's like, yeah, that would be amazing. I just need a car. I had a bad accident. Some Uber driver ran into me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, man, no, no problem, no problem. So then, okay, I took his number, came back to the house. About three or four hours later, I'm sitting there home. I like, no, 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 no. I just need to give them the car. It's got issues. It can be resolved. It shouldn't be too complicated. But I just need to give it to them. Just give it. I tried to give it away. Why would I try to sell it? It needs to go to somebody that can just put a tiny bit of money into it, and hopefully it'll, it'll be fine. So I gave it away. So the car, I would never had to drive it to the scrapyard. It disappeared. They took it. I don't even care where it went. Hopefully they got it going. It's gone. That was that was something I didn't even have to deal with. The car just disappeared. Okay, a couple days later, um, somebody contacted me who's been watching my videos for six years. You know who you are. You don't have to comment. Nobody needs to know. The important thing is, is I got a random email that says uh, a little. It said the title was a little help, please. Um, I knew the guy. I emailed him a few times. Really nice guy. Um, and basically, what happened? He's in a a, a foreign country. Um, I don't even know the name of the country. It's in the same continent that uh, Germany is in. He's like, the electric power people somehow shorted out the whole entire complex and like burned up all my electronic equipment. And the only way I make money is I fix cell phones and stuff like this. And that's the only way I make money. He's like, is there any way that you know you or somebody you know can help me? And, and this is all happening within like a couple of days. And I'm just like, okay. I'm like. Um, I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, let me help you. So I emailed him and I said, I, I have a couple dollars in my PayPal account I can give you. Uh, it's the only thing I got. We literally had some bills taken out and we live paycheck to paycheck. And we, I literally, like, was bouncing my, my normal account because of some stuff that came out. And we live, like I said, we live paycheck to paycheck, so we're right cutting on the edge there. And 
I told him, I said, I'm going to just give this, I'm just going to give you amount of money. I said, just take it, buy some new equipment so you can make money, so you can continue what you need to do to make a living. Apparently, over there where he lives at, people just leave you out to hang and dry. So, I gave him the money, and it was like a pretty good amount of money for him, because it was almost like a quarter or more of what he would normally get paid in an entire like salaries month or something like this. I said, go buy the few pieces of equipment you need just to get by. And hopefully, and what I told him in the email, I said, I said, God will provide the rest. That's it. That's all that I said. Um, a few days later, okay, I told him, I said, God will provide the rest even for me, even for you. Just don't worry about it. A few days later, I'm sitting at work, and one of the people at work comes up to me and says, hey, I've got an opportunity for you. It's like, what's that? It's like, come in on Saturday, finish this project we've been trying to get done on the site, some other housework stuff that we need to do. Come in and do that, and we'll pay you to do that. And I'm just like, okay. So I go do that. Well, it, I, I went and did that. Okay, the, I've never had an opportunity where they're just going to pay me to do something on the side on a Saturday. It just doesn't happen. So that these coincidences aren't coincidences. This is like because of the way we believe, okay? Given you will be given, right? Um, <laughs> If you're if you're trusted with a little, you'll be trusted with a lot. So they paid me almost twice as much as what I gave. Is what I gave away. It was incredible. Well, that was pretty interesting. That was that was wonderful. And then um, that a few days later, I'm sitting in front of the milling machine at my work. It's a cheap Chinese milling machine. Nothing against Chinese, but this particular milling machine was horrible. It vibrates, it's terrible. I'm trying to make high precision parts and I'm just thinking to myself, man, I gave away that milling machine away. I could have probably brought it with me. And I just, I almost regret it, right? I had this like regret. And I'm like, no. I'm like, it's fine. And then I was literally doing a live stream. The people on the live stream will know this. I was going to find the clip on the live stream and show you, but I'm not going to do that. You can go find it if you want. I'm sitting there and I'm just saying out loud, like an out loud prayer. I'm like, I will have a milling machine. It will come. And I will have a big milling machine. It's going to be awesome. Like, it will come. I just, like, pronounced it. It was like a, almost like a prayer, but not. Okay? And that happened on, like, a Wednesday. Friday, my wife drags me to this family gathering where uh, this, 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 this uh, particular people, they just basically open their house to guests on a Friday. Just weird. So we go there, drag the whole family with us. We left at, like, 6 o'clock. We didn't get there until like almost eight o'clock, and the beds go to the kids go to bed at eight o'clock normally. It's like holy cow! All right, so we're there. It's it's like almost nine thirty, almost ten o'clock. Like let's go. We got to pick up our stuff. We got to get out of here. We got to get the kids to bed. And this this random guy just started talking to me, and I was like, uh, blah blah blah. This is you know why I got here. How I got here. This is what I do. I do stuff on YouTube. I do research like this. He's like, that's pretty cool. He's like, uh, there's this, um, it's, I don't know how we got there, but somehow we started talking about my boss. He happened to know some of the things my boss did, because my boss does a lot of really cool stuff. Um, he started a spa, and then he gave away like half the money that the spa earns. So really cool, pay it forward type of feeling guy. Really awesome guy, my boss is. And basically, um, this guy somehow almost like knew my boss, because he knew a lot of the things that he did, and like, strangely closely related and somehow I got to talking about the milling machine and I only said a few blips yeah I had this awesome really big milling machine I had to get rid of it. I had to move here and he stops and he looks at me and he goes I just happen to have a milling machine for sale I'm like no really he's like yeah I really do and I'm like oh, okay oh, that's incredible I was like okay pretty big pretty decent sized milling machine I'm like okay well let's talk about it we can figure out what it is and it was his stepdad or excuse me it was his wife's dad who had passed away about a year ago he was an inventor really awesome guy um, really really cool and I went I what um, I ended up I want to make sure I get this, this story I remember but I want to make sure I hit all the highlights because it's really an inter interesting story so I went over there, you know, and I went to his to this place, and basically, um, his wife's mom, his wife's mom, yes, is still alive. So, his it was it was her dad that passed away. So just a huge garage full of machinery, like all sorts of stuff. He was just an inventor, really awesome guy. It seems like. 
And this guy, uh, apparently, right before he passed away, he actually accepted Jesus, and, and it, it was a pretty cool experience for the family, because in this whole life he didn't believe. He didn't have any faith belief. And right before he passed away, he accepted. And it was a pretty amazing story, and it was really exciting. So I went there, and I told, um, you know, I, I went there, and I, I looked at the milling machine. They wanted $1,000 for it or something. I'm like, man, I just I don't have the money. So through that, um, there was a lot of other stuff there. One of the things is this really amazing micro milling machine that's sitting in the background. I'm going to make a video of all the stuff I brought back with me because it's it's a really cool thing. I'm going to get, I'm going to devote it to the man, Robert K. Hansen. Pretty cool things, right? So my boss, if I ask him, I haven't asked him yet. If I ask him, he'll probably let me buy it with his money, bring it to the shop at the facility I work at and keep it there. Eventually either buy it back or just use it there because I need one that's there. So you know, the power of prayer, basically, right? And the power of belief and the power of all of these things and, and the power of this story. Um, so, from day one of making this YouTube video channel, I was sort of kind of greedy and wanted to be the first one to do stuff. And finally, I figured out I got to let go of my ego. I got to let go of my ego. I got to just do what I got to do. I got to be honest to myself and I just need to be positive, help people out show the positive things, just be myself, okay? So I got rid of the ego, I got rid of all this stuff, so the reason that I started this YouTube channel, um, well, not the reason I started it, but the reason that it got popular is because I started letting go of that stuff, and I just, I just started being myself, right? And through that, through that, I truly believe that I've been gaining subscribers, people have been doing some amazing things, sharing a lot of stuff, getting a lot of information, videos go viral, a couple of them, and I really think that that happens so that I can share some of the things that I believe with you guys, because some of you guys are in your basement, you don't believe anything, you're young people, you're old people, you still may not believe, or you're awesome faith believers, and it encourages me, but I can sort of throw snippets at you guys and you don't even know where it's coming from. Most of it comes directly out of the Bible or stuff I've learned or experiences I've had or tests that I've done. So a lot of this a lot of this stuff is I believe that I've been given the opportunity to be speaking freely to you guys and I, I'm always a little lyrious about preaching to you guys. I don't like pushing my faith on people. I just like showing examples like this video right here, my testimony showing this example and just sort of giving you guys this information without you even realize maybe where it's coming from. I made a video a while back about helping the, a lady out fixing her brakes. That video apparently had more thumbs up and likes than any of my videos in the last like year, which is amazing. But I did not post that video to get pats on the back. I posted that video to encourage you guys to do something good, you know, but it really does rely on my faith belief and stuff like this. Um, so, I was going to tell you something important and now I forgot, but that's all that I've got in my notes. But basically, oh, I know <laughs> the most important thing. So, as a Catholic, uh, when I was a baby, I got baptized, right? Well, I've been growing in my faith belief for 15 years or so now. 10 really strong years, I can remember. 8, which have been extremely positive, and of another 5, which have been really the highlights of testing this spirituality out in this Christianity, right? So last week I got baptized as a grown man to 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 believe fully 100% and not just be there in church, but really be a really strong believer and really basically, you know, what they say, just you get a new life basically. And you get to just start over and it's been an interesting week. Um Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go with that. I just wanted to give, it's a, it's a, let me look up the date because I want to, I want to go back from 10 years from now and I want to watch this video and I want to remember what I was thinking. Um, and I want to remember, I go back and watch the interview for myself that I did with myself, right? I want I, I go back and watch that just occasionally just to keep my mind fresh of what I was thinking at that point in my life. And, I, and all of those things I still hold very, very strongly. Um, I cannot find the date. Okay, so I, I, I watched that and kind of, it gives me a refresher because you have to constantly slap yourself in the face and go, oh man, yeah, I just like, don't get, don't get too excited about stuff. Be, 
Be thankful for the things you have. Okay, so it was actually the 20th, March 20th, 2016. I feel like a new person. I really do. Um, I want to remember that date. It's very important. So it's Easter right now, another amazing thing for believers, right? Um, I'm not gonna, like I said, I don't really want to preach to you guys, but I'm, I'm really thinking about bringing a little bit more of my faith into this channel. I've always been a little shy about it. I definitely have so much more to learn about my faith. Um, I'm just now, you know, I'm just now starting out. I really am. So even with 15 or so years of really digging through this, I'm just starting my faith belief journey. I really am. So anyway, I'm going to leave you guys go with that. I just want to say thank you for being here. I want to say I'd like to bring more about this, my belief, into my videos. Even to the point where maybe every once a week, I would love to have like an open chat about this stuff. Um, I'm definitely no expert, but it would be cool to have like a live stream chat where people could come join and actually talk for like an hour or something. It'd be like, almost like a Bible study. I, I, I haven't ever really participated in like a Bible study. Matter of fact, I haven't even read through the whole Bible. I am very new at my even my own faith journey, but all I know is that I've tested it, I've tested it, I've tested it, and I've always tested it, and it came back completely unlike I would have thought, sometimes a thousand times better, okay? Um, that's all. I just want to, I want to express my testimony to you guys. I don't want to push it at you, but I want you to realize that it's important to me. And these are where my values come from. You know, these are where the, these, some people, they'll watch my videos and they'll go, man, you're so passionate about what you do. And it really, it really comes back to my faith belief. Um, so that's it. You guys can leave a comment if you want. I do not want to be praised or anything like that. I just wanted to share my story. And I want to say thank you guys for subscribing. And that's it. All right. Peace and love. God bless you guys. It's Easter. Have a good Easter. Have an amazing day. 2016 Easter. I just got back from a Saturday night church service. It was amazing. It was great. And now, the future. Keep testing. Keep learning. Keep growing in my belief system. Trying to help people. Help and be helped. Learn and be learned. Love and be loved. All of these things I've always been passionate about. Let go of your ego. Do what you want to do. Have fun with what you do. And if you don't like what you're doing, learn to like what you're doing until you can like what you're doing, doing something else. Okay? Alright, peace and love. Bye.